Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming again for Death Cafe. I know some of you have done this before. Um, this is a project we run called uh, My Last Orders, and it's encouraging people to think about death and dying. In our society, we don't talk about it. And the reason we don't talk about it is we make everything professional. But more importantly, I saw lots of busy professionals with little time to talk. So there must be all sorts of emotional issues that our, our doctors have, our nurses have, and I just wanted to create space for them. So we've got these questions for you. They're from a set of cards called, uh, called Grave Talk. They cover uh, five areas, death and dying about life, death itself, society, funerals and grief. And all I need to do is to put these in the middle of the table, ask one of you to pick over the first card, to read it out and everybody else just to talk about it. As a doctor, we're faced with many aspects of life, obviously on a day-to-day -day basis, birth, life, and then death. And death is often neglected and not really talked about much, um, particularly you know, on, the, on the wards and between doctors. So I think coming to something like this, being able to talk particularly with colleagues, it just puts everything into perspective and gives me a chance to talk freely about these topics, which are actually quite important. Have you seen a dead body? Well, come on, you're medical students. It should, should, should be straightforward, shouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's something that maybe makes you feel a bit unnerved the first time you do it. Um, obviously, we've seen lots in mortuaries. In uh, I think the first experience for me would have been in dissection in anatomy classes in medical school. And you kind of, for me, it was, um, I tried to sort of, not look at the face and just look at the body because that's what we were we were dissecting and that me helped me because it was less personal then um, but I've also sort of seen the body of a family member which is a lot less pleasant because you you knew the person before life and that's 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 a lot harder to yeah. to deal with I think it's uh, particularly difficult to be a healthcare professional and see how the number die at times because I remember my experience with my grandmother and everyone surrounding me was saying, do something about it. And I was like, I'm sorry, that's <laughs> what you can't. And you're already emotionally overwhelmed. I find it particularly difficult because everyone expects something out of us while we're there. But I mean, it is a difficult experience yeah. when it's a family member. It's a very contrasting experience to someone you don't really know that well. I think they forget that they're human beings whose grandmas also died. Uh, and I think as well sometimes, um, because we're so busy, people tend to forget that doctors live at a very high rate of intensity, as do all our clinicians. If you're not careful, can end up with burnout, really. So that, that's an important issue. So uh, what is a good death? Well, I'm more historically, what is a good death varies greatly. Yeah, hugely, yeah. Is dying with a sword in your hand? Yeah, or being sent to Valhalla. Absolutely. For Chinese people, probably what they view um, as a good death is a death where you're surrounded by family members, where everyone is on board, they know what's happening. So, right. um, and often we find that sometimes we think it's been a really good death, very peaceful with good symptom management. And actually, the family think it was horrific in their eyes, it was unsettled and yeah. it was traumatic because it's very final. From that point of view, from a symptom management point of view, the best way to go is like that. Yep. That yeah. seems like a good death to me. Yeah. A doctor's oath is about giving the best to the patient to treat their symptoms. And death is inevitable. It's an important part of life. And it's important we try and make that as comfortable and as good a death if possible for the individual in whatever way they feel that is. We focus too much on quantity of life instead of quality of life as a society. Um, and for me, I, if I didn't have any quality of life, for example, if I had lost capacity, um, if I was completely non, not able to function, completely dependent, I wouldn't want to continue life. So we talk about a good death. Most importantly is, I'd say, being in control is the main thing for me. Have we become so successful we're too successful? So we are keeping people alive in all sorts of conditions when, you know, we should let them go. We've lost the art of dying, and I think for me, if we've lost the art of dying, have we lost the art of living? Has it all become functional? Is there something missing? Because when you talk about a good death being family around you, well then, how much time do you spend with your family? You know, being good death is about, you know, 
showing respect for your parents, you know, how then do you do that in normal life? All those questions, the, the, the good death question begs other questions about living, doesn't it? You know, if a good death for you is control, how much control and purpose do you have in your life now? Because you can turn those questions around. Brilliant. The real beauty of having a cafe such as this and a conversation such as this is I'm not telling you you've got to have the answer. And that, I think that's a crucial difference. Doing a death cafe with our My Last Orders project is not training and it's not education. What's important is that people have the space and the freedom to reach their own conclusions. We've met together, we've talked about death, we're still alive, let's eat. <laughs>